Welcome to No Place Like Home with Mike and Megan Norp, where we believe the center of the universe is your home and our home and every other home on the planet. On this podcast, we talk about anything related to that, parenting, home education, marriage, really anything, as long as it has to do with being home. Hey, Megan, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Yeah, what's been on your mind? Well, we've had family in town the last two weeks. Two in a row. And tomorrow afternoon, Elijah, our oldest son, is returning home after serving as a missionary. He left two years ago. I think it was two years last week. And we have had like a whirlwind preparing for that. It's been a little hectic, Mm -hmm. but it's going to settle down now, right? Uh, Yeah, right. I mean, what's what's ahead? Oh, yeah, the holidays. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Elijah comes home tomorrow, and then we're very happy to have his grandparents. My parents. Not, Mike's parents coming into town, and it's going to be, everybody's, we're kind of, we've we'd never sent anybody off since he's the oldest. Yeah. And we've never welcomed anybody back. So we're all like, how do, you know, the older kids kind of slid into the top spots. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, how's this going to work? Because he was top dog. Well, now he's going to he's gonna have friends up there in that top spot, you know? <laughs> What's the dynamic going to be? We're not giving him his, his title back, but... Well, and also I've been thinking how we're entering... We're now in uncharted waters. Totally. Uncharted waters. Mm-hmm. Because we have an adult child now who is going to need to launch into more real adult life, right? Yeah. And we're going to see how that works. Yeah. Uh, but he is planning on going to, to college, so that's... That's kind of in between adult life still, I guess. But anyways, it's new for us. Well, in my brain, if you wanted a window into it, I am constantly taking in and archiving information. And one of the archives is titled How to Be a Good Parent to an Adult Child. And I've been working on it since I was in college because I (laughs) felt that friction with my parents suddenly. We'd never really had friction before. Yeah, that was new. I was like, whoa, whoa. And so I started putting away information, watching people who seem to be doing it well and asking them questions. But this is where the rubber meets the road. Mm-hmm. We'll see if that, see that archive it. has any relevant information in it. <laughs> <laughs> if it's actually useful information. Yes. We're going to find out. Yeah. That'll be a new learning experience for all of us. So I've been practicing some of my statements where <laughs> before I would have said, like, that's a terrible idea or like, mm, nope, I don't think you should do that. Now I'll say, I wouldn't really say that's a terrible idea, but you know, you're thinking that. Now I'll say like, well, I'm sure you'll figure it out. Or I I think either way you'll, the, I don't know. That's all I got. That's my only <laughs> Just statement. Just put it in there. You got to put it in their court basically. And show support. Yeah. That they'll figure it out. Like, well, you know what? I trust you. Mm-hmm. I think um, it, you'll just have to walk down this road and see what happens. <laughs> I mean, as long as you're paying for it. Yeah, as long as it's your money, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> right. So I'm in that. So I'm a little nervous. And right. we're all a little nervous, I think, because it's, it's new. So that's where I'm at. Okay. We do want to mention up front here that we do uh, have a Patreon. And we'd love to have you go over there and have a look at that. Um, we're excited to kind of build that community. and um, We've got some really fun things. We have some fun stuff over there. Yeah, we're I'm not excited. good at pitching this yet. <laughs> well, um. <laughs> also, we're pretty excited. We wanted it to be something that was worthwhile. Um, that first and foremost, we wanted it to be. We've always dreamt of be able to form a community mm-hmm. of of people who are kind of have same sort of goals and same sort of desires about life. And um, we always wondered if we could do it physically, like we'd have retreats or something, but. Patreon's the perfect place to do it virtually. We're going to have extra content. Extra content. We want it to be fun. We also have month to month, we'll send a gift or a prize out to one patron, one lucky patron, something that either I, some little treasure that I found in my treasure hunting or something yeah. we've made. I don't know. I think it'll be really fun though. Yeah. So head on over. The, there's a link in the uh, description of the podcast for that if you want to go check it out. Um, also, you can find us on Instagram. We have an uh, No Place Like Home. Is it No Place Like Home podcast? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and we will be having a YouTube channel where we'll, we'll post these um, eventually. So join us on those other platforms, and we'd love to interact with you there. Thanks for in advance for supporting us and for being our homies. I want to start today's episode with a disclaimer. Right. Um, 
probably every episode should have this disclaimer. Everything, every time we post on the internet should have that disclaimer. <laughs> every, everything. <laughs> but I saw a meme like a year ago or so that said, you know, like somebody on the internet says, I like bananas. And then somebody else is like, what? You don't like oranges? Like, are you against vitamin C? Like, right. oh, don't, don't you know that like oranges are really important for people's health? You know, and you could keep going and going and going. You could right. be like. And how bad bananas are for the environment or whatever. Yeah, and then, or it could be like, well, I'm allergic to bananas and would die if I ate them. So I guess you like me dying, you know, and you're just like, whoa, I just like bananas, <laughs> you know. That is the reason why nobody wants to talk about anything. Right. Because there's this crazy, weird, like black and white world on the internet where if you say i like bananas it's like i guess you don't like anything else and you could be like no 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 or you're against these other yeah, things yeah i like bananas and oranges but then some pineapple person shows up and he's like well what about pineapple <laughs> and it's never ending like it is crazy the people that come out of the woodworks right and claim harm because you didn't mention them mm -hmm. and you're like dude i just want to talk about bananas today you know right and it's impossible to address every possible thing that connects to this idea that you're talking about to make everyone feel okay and to, you know, whatever. Like, well, and some days you do just want to talk about bananas. Right. Like, I'll talk about oranges another time, but today I want to talk about bananas. But it's also true. So any idea we talk about on here, we expect that you know as a reasonable person that it doesn't mean that we hate everything else or that we think nothing else matters. Or, yeah, we think we don't think you should only eat bananas, basically. Yeah. Like, like, we just happen to like them. And so whatever topic we talk about cannot be practiced in a vacuum. Right. It is always in a collaboration with other ideas mm -hmm. that we'll talk about. But sometimes it's really helpful to dial in and take a look at something in depth. Right. And you maybe won't mention, but but don't forget, you right. also like oranges. Right. 50 times throughout the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, maybe when we do a podcast on bananas... The next week we'll do a podcast on oranges just for that balance. <laughs> right. But but let's just, it's just a given that yeah. we're reasonable people and you're reasonable people that we all know that by saying we like bananas, please don't, don't worry. We're not discounting any other fruit or vegetables or anything mm -hmm. else. And if you're allergic to bananas, we right. don't expect you to eat the bananas. Sure, then, then take you know? it with a grain of salt or whatever, however it applies to your life. Yeah. Okay. So just wanted to say that. Great. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about raising a sheltered child. Yeah, which actually has a really bad connotation. Right. And um, if you go and just Google it, I don't know about you guys, um, but we've been homeschoolers now for over a decade. We So we've encountered a lot of ideas from mm -hmm. other people of what they imagine we're doing to our kids or not doing for our kids. Um, and also yeah. very sensitive to how people like us are portrayed in media and stuff. Uh -huh. But um, so we maybe are a little bit more sensitive to this idea than other people. But I think everybody has um, an idea of what sheltered means, like a sheltered child. And I have proof of that because if you Google it. <laughs> so you Googled sheltered child. Sheltered child. And I came to the Urban Dictionary, which is the bastion of truth. And knowledge on the internet and this is their definition we can pick this apart a little bit if you want to this would be fun it says a person that has lived with strict religious parents that are completely controlling hmm. that they can't even let them express themselves even if they tell them to just be themselves ends up making their kids become more rebellious and making them feel ashamed of their own interest that's not plural by the way and likes so first of all this person obviously did not have strict grammar parents. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see there because there's were. more than one definition and none of the people who put these definitions in had strict grammar parents. I'm a little bit, I mean, I think it's very telling that they didn't just say strict parents, they threw in religious. So there's yep. that's the first connotation, right? That like you're religious and homeschooler. Mm -hmm. So you're going to raise some of those kids. Right. Um, and then that because you're religious and you're homeschooling or you're just religious parents and strict, uh -huh. that means you're also controlling. Of course. And so I think we wanted to talk about today that um, parents are, it's kind of your duty to be, I mean, are you strict when you don't let your toddler have access to all the chemicals in the cabinet or touch a hot stove? I would say most people would say no. Yeah, right. Because you're protecting them. In fact, there's 
like legal negligence issues. Right. But because we've had, there's so many differing views on what's healthy or not healthy uh-huh. or appropriate for children and teenagers. Mm-hmm. Um, it's become more of like a matter of opinion. Right. And so you can just throw out words like strict and religious and controlling. <laughs> So I so this sort of demonstrates what the general this negative public? negative opinion. Here's another right. one: a person raised by strict parents who refuse to expose their children to the real world. Okay. So so I think that's really the crux right there. That like a parent's job is to expose their children to quote the real world. Um, here's another <laughs> one: um, a sheltered child. A shelter child. Are we talking now people who are having... I guess that's a title, shelter child. I guess so. I don't know. Let's their parents control their lives until they're 25. Wow. They have some specific numbers yeah. here. Okay. That's good to know. <laughs> um, I like this one. All in all. This is That's always a good way to start a definition. All in all. Yeah. yeah. It's a very, if you're ever it's playing very scientific. Balderdash. <laughs> Definitely start your fake definition with all in all, because many dictionaries start that way. (laughs) Definitions start that way. All in all, these are the people that are in for the shock of their lives when they realize how this world really works and that it's not all fun and games. Wow. Wow. I think that's kind of weird, though, because if you're really strict, if your parents are like really strict and controlling, would you think that the world was all fun and games? That w- well, maybe I wouldn't mind those kind then, where like my <laughs> my parents made me feel like life was all fun and games till the age of twenty five. You're right. I mean, okay. if my parents made me feel that way, maybe I would let them control my do only what they told me until I was twenty five. Because so far, it's all been fun and games. <laughs> anyway, sorry these these contradict each other. These definitions a little bit. Oh, actually, there's one at the end. Okay. This one actually that's, makes the most sense. Let's hear it. A child who is overly protected from the outside world impacting their judgmental, social, and economic skills. This usually happens because of a parent, guardian, or adult adult figure in the child's life. And here's their example. <laughs> this example's funny. Child, I can't go out tonight. My parents won't let me because it's too dangerous. It seems like a reasonable reason not to okay. let them. And then friend, dude, it's not dangerous. It's literally a block away from here. You're such a sheltered child. <laughs> uh, I definitely go with that friend who's yeah, like, dude, the, the friend it's knows not better. dangerous. Yes, absolutely. Friend always knows better than the parents. So this is a helpful website. You can also get <laughs> a sheltered child mug or neck gator, by the way. Okay. There's <laughs> For whatever merch. definition right. you put in, I guess you can get it put on merch. But Nice. So, you know, these sorts of ideas, absolutely, I... I I'm, these are not a surprise to me. Sure. That because you're as a homeschooling this. mom, I was getting these communicated to me with concern all of the time. Like, sure. how That's are you pushback. not being this? How are you going to make sure your kids aren't these weird kids? Mm-hmm. And even though I didn't know any homeschoolers growing up, I absolutely somehow had this idea that <laughs> yeah, homeschoolers were going to automatically be sheltered kids. Yeah, that, that message came through pretty clear to all of us. The idea of a homeschooled child was like the weird kid. Yeah, and the sheltered kid. Yeah. Therefore, weird. And I I spent many of my first years in, you know, as a homeschooling mom and just a mom in general, trying to prove that my I would make sure my kids weren't sheltered. Right. You know, and sometimes people even like share it like, like like it was some sort of weakness, like, oh, I came from an overly sheltered home uh-huh. or I had a very sheltered childhood or I lived in a very sheltered community. Mm-hmm. And we say it with like almost like a little bit of shame or embarrassment. Right. Or is that explanation for like, you know. Some like failing you, or. Yeah, like it's my little handicap or whatever. Um, so I guess that's what I wanted to talk about it. And it comes up in media all the time and it makes you feel really sensitive. And, and, and I'm we're definitely aware of it because – you're always aware of how people like you are portrayed in media. Sure. And over and over again, it's like all of these weird stories. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, there's like that one that came out a few years ago with Vigo Mortensen. Right. I think it's is it Captain Fantastic or Mr. Fantastic or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Or Fantastic Man. I don't remember what it is. <laughs> where he's like a homeschool dad. So it like gives also like the like it makes it seem like also homeschooling kids are like well it has all the kind of the tropes of homeschooling a they're weird because they're sheltered and b they're also like geniuses because he's made him learn like five different languages and all this kind of stuff so it kind of goes both directions but they can't survive in the real world 
yeah, it definitely makes me wonder about why they're telling those stories. I know that there's drama there in that type of story, and that might be part of it, that healthy, well-adjusted families don't produce a lot of drama for a story. Um, and so that might be part of why they're, why they're doing it. Andrew and I talk about this all the time because he wants to be a writer when he grows up and, and we'll talk about like, it is a great story because when you get rid of parents, mm. um, there's way more danger, which I think we can talk about again. Right. But I'm like, what? You know, like it does create drama, but it's like, dude, life is full of drama. I'm a parent <laughs> and I try pretty hard to like be a good parent and yet there's still a lot of drama. Like we can keep healthy parents in the family and still have good stories. So right. I don't know what the answer is there, but I do think. Well, obviously we can't solve that. But I think what we can solve is how we as a person or as parents view the idea of sheltering your children. And respond to it. Like, okay, and, that's just a, that's a story. And you can see like, okay, that's a story they're telling. But just because they're telling it doesn't make it true about parents who want to protect their kids or homeschool their kids. They're not automatically weirdos and overprotective, controlling all that yeah. bad stuff. I mean, it's gotten to the level where if you want to pass your beliefs onto your children, mm. like your religious beliefs, your faith tradition, that's seen as controlling. And it's right. like, dude, it is impossible not to pass on your beliefs to your children. Right. I mean, they have no beliefs. They arrive with none. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> got to teach them the way. In fact, that... I mean, I will bring it up that I was reading in um, uh, a publication, a okay. major publication this week about it. I think the headline said, like, many parents think that they should be in charge of their child's education, but they're wrong. And then in the article, it talked about how, like, you know, ed education has always been about, like, teaching children to open their mind. Right. And it may not agree with the parents. And it's like, well, wait a second, wait a second. Is that really well how it goes down at school? Because I went to school. I don't remember my teacher saying, open your mind. I remember my teacher saying, if you don't say this. <laughs> or recite this. Or, yeah, it you won't know. be correct. Right. And like, I don't want it said this way. I don't want it done this way. I want it done exactly this way. Mm -hmm. I didn't see a lot of encouragement of many viewpoints in right. public school. An open discussion. So really what they're saying is, we want the children to follow what we believe. We want to indoctrinate children. <laughs> <laughs> because and we don't want you to indoctrinate children right i mean unless it agrees with what we, we prefer say. to be the ones who do that yeah and you. so it's like i mean indoctrinate that's a very very sure, very that's negative super word negative these days. yeah but like a child is an empty vessel when they come yeah they don't know anything you have to create a worldview for them and if you don't somebody else will because they need one yeah it, it's just they're gonna look around happens. for it yeah and so we have this really negative view of any parent who's actually trying to do that very intentionally. Mm -hmm. Well, And people ask us, oh, so are you like hoping your kids will be the same religion as you? It's like, of course I am. Because if, if I believe it. <laughs> Just like I'm hoping that my kids happy. will eat healthy food. Right. Like I choose it because I think it's a better way to live. And that's like what I'm, I mean, like, yes. Sure. If I didn't, if I thought like, well, it doesn't really matter, then I would, probably wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, I wouldn't believe it if, if I didn't think it made a difference. So we feel like it's really important. We have to remind ourselves, and we think it's really important for us to remind each other and other parents that, like, dude, that's your job. Right. I mean, your job is to indoctrinate your children in a way. You know, yeah, like, I mean, that's in a, a way. totally negative word, but, like, that's your job. Your, job, your is job is to, to teach, teach them, them how to clean their bodies, mm -hmm. how to take care of their bodies, how to, like, keep a tidy space so they don't, like, have gross bacteria that could kill them when they go to college, like sure. it sometimes does with meningitis, you uh -huh. know? Like, that's your job. Your job is to teach them the way to live. And also, your your job is also to protect them from the weird bad ideas. This is kind of a dark example, but there's something called grooming, right? Mm -hmm. Where, like, a creep... An abuser, yeah. ...will do little things to get your com child comfortable with where he wants to take them. Right. You know, eventually. And that's called grooming. Marketing companies are grooming you all the time. Right. They're like grooming you with ideas so that like they can sell you their product. You know, it is, and so it that's, there's so much of that sort of behavior going on. Mm -hmm. And if you just trust that everybody has the same goals for your child, and that like, well, of course this show, it seems it's not a bad show in quotes. Right. Um, 
it, you have to also make sure that it is filling them up, that vest, that empty vessel with the things that you actually think will help them be a happy adult. Right. Yeah. And one of the things that we I want to talk about that you sort of brought up was this idea of how to protect them from uh, media that might be harmful to them. I think a lot of people are aware of we need to keep them away from overly violent or should, overly violent, overly sexual, you know, a bad language, those sorts of things where most people are going to say, yeah, I don't want my kid to be seeing those things. But what I think is a little bit more tricky are the shows that are made for kids or aren't obviously um, sending maybe negative messages where there is none of those none of those sort of overtly rated bad things. Rated R things. Rated yeah. R topics or PG-13, depending on you know where you're at on that. But their messaging, how their they... Their worldview. Their worldview, how they portray parents, how they portray children. Um, how they portray just what brings happiness. Yeah, what, like whether important. it's overly materialistic maybe or overly concerned about um, consumption or how people look. All these things. Now, I imagine some of you out there are starting to sweat and go, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to watch for how much materialism is in the show now. <laughs> it's every show. <laughs> no, I'm just saying there there have been times when my kids are watching something and mm -hmm. I'm like in the room doing something else and I'm like, what is this? Right. I'm like, guys, I don't like this. And they're like, well, it's fine. It's fine. There's nothing this or that. And I'm like, you know what though? I don't like it. I don't know what it is. It's a vibe. Yeah. And I don't like the vibe. And um, I would tell you that's your mother's intuition. Moms, I think women are especially good at vibes. I think sure. every husband in the world would tell you that <laughs> because he's not especially good at vibes. <laughs> right. We're oblivious to it a lot of times. Yeah. Um, we're very clued into things like that. And there have definitely been times when I've asked my kids to stop doing something to not go to certain situations, and I couldn't tell them why. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's probably experienced that, but it didn't mean I didn't still require it and right. say, nope, nope, not going to do that. But it, it also didn't mean that that was enough. So I feel like it's really helpful to our children when we do say, I don't know why, to think about it. Yeah. Come back to them later, and because right, and to think that through, think and to through. maybe do a little research or whatever. Yeah, and just think it through because otherwise they're just like that was arbitrary and strange. Mm -hmm. My mom just likes to like who knows, but if I can come back and say, you know, I was thinking about it, and I think what I don't like about it is this thing. Mm -hmm. It makes me uncomfortable, and, and and sometimes that will happen. And as my children get older, especially, they they'll say, well, I think you misinterpreted that because I've been watching the whole show or mm. I've been reading the whole book or whatever. And that was an isolated event and we'll have a really good conversation, yeah. which is better than me never say anything uh -huh. because there's an awareness level now. My children now understand that worldviews are being created right. everywhere all the time. And if you don't know what a worldview is, it's, it's kind of like what is important in life. Mm -hmm. um, one worldview might be success, financial right. success. One is might, paramount. Like that that's your kind career, of top. that's your, you know, and this is a very simplistic way of talking sure. about Sure, because we're, we're, people are people, are, they're complicated, but. Yeah, um, another might be like the most important thing in the world is being a good human, like a righteous person, according to your faith tradition. It might be being um, a good parent, you mm -hmm. know, or being a strong family member. Um, and everything has, is supports a worldview, mm -hmm. but especially stories do. Right. They're called narratives. They create narratives in your brain. And that's what we're saying, that there's not very many narratives about healthy families mm -hmm. or about good parents sheltering their kids. Right. Now, it, we should mention, this is kind of like, I, I like bananas and I like oranges. We're not a fan of helicopter parenting or um, something we call snowplow parenting. Which I think, someone someone else coined that, but yeah. we really that's that seems apt for what happens. And a I lot think of times. maybe we'll talk about that very soon. What that means? That's different, though. Yeah, that's sheltering kids from having to do things that are it's, hard. <laughs> it's sheltering them from consequences, yeah. and we're not a fan of that no, at all. Definitely not. Um, we're up all about creating a safe environment for your kids to grow. And if you think about it, back to the garden analogy that we've mentioned before, that you're the gardener in mm -hmm. your home, and your children are these tender young plants if you start your plants 
inside. You plant the little seeds. They're called your starts. And they come up and you, t- you know, they've grown and now they're like, you know, four inches tall. And if you were to take those directly out onto your back patio, they would die. Because any little bit of wind right, they're not ready and for any that. sun, they would wither and die. They don't have the roots for that. And so what you have to do is after they're to a certain point, you take them out for a few minutes and then you bring them back in Hmm. and you increase that time until they're ready to go out. And so your children are the same way. There are appropriate times for them to be ready to handle certain truths or experiences. Yep. Um, But it's not, it's, it's, there's no reason to rush it. Right. Because you think, I think that people act like, oh, they don't experience this now. They're like, if you don't let them go to school and be made fun of when they're 20 years old, they won't be able to handle it because that's the real world. Are you telling me that the kid who's made fun of all through school, when he shows up at his new job and he's bullied, he just feels so like, oh, I've been here before. I'm really equipped for this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. I'll tell you who is, though. One who's had a really great foundation where they've gotten to know themselves and they're very comfortable in their own skin and their brain is more fully developed. Right. Then they're like, oh, that's silly. I'm sorry. I feel sorry for you that you're so wrapped up in this, Mm -hmm. you know, this popularity contest or whatever it is, right? I, it's okay. There are appropriate times for your children to be ready for certain experiences. You don't have to think you have to rush them to negative experiences or else they won't be strong. Yeah. You don't. This, once again, this differs from letting your children explore and grow. There, you still do have to, appropriately let let, give them more and more freedom Um, but we're not talking about that today remember yeah we're talking more about just sheltering them from um, ideas that are harmful and situations that can be harmful well let's Um, let's talk about that because i can immediately hear what a spooky thing to say we shelter them from ideas that are harmful there are no ideas that are off limits in our household sure yeah but it also means there are no ideas that we're not going to pick apart and really get dig into and sure. say, okay, well, does that hold water? Mm-hmm. Do you see any evidence for that? Can we follow that? Like if we keep doing that, right? Th- what this idea tells us, do, do you think that, does that make logical sense that A plus B equals C here? You know, can we really follow this all the way through to the end? Sure. Is there, you know, that uh, evidence-based? So I, we don't say that no ideas can be discussed. But we want to discuss them with them because there are really tricky ways mm-hmm. of discussing things with people. I mean, sure. I don't know who hasn't had the experience where they're talking to someone and they go, oh, my, they tell you something. You're like, what? Oh, my gosh, that's so crazy. Oh, no, no. And then you go home and you tell someone like, we well, don't believe this, blah, blah, blah. And then the other person's like, mm, no, that's not true at all. <laughs> like, it's actually really normal. And you're like, oh, we, we're all... We're all susceptible to be manipulated. Yeah. And like the point of every commercial is to manipulate you. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. I don't know if you know this. There's a great documentary by that one super size me guy about product placement. Morgan Spurlock. Yeah. Morgan Spurlock documentary where like there is so, <laughs> movies and t- TV shows are also ads. Right. Yeah. Product They're placement. They're full of product of placement and ideas like companies will pay for narratives to be told Mm -hmm. that make their company look good i think that what with the point you're making and also you've had experience with this because you did study film we we keep talking about movies and 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 tv but i think that's that's the media that a lot of people are consuming so that's where a lot of ideas are coming through but that nothing just shows up by accident on screen and nothing in a story is really by accident Mm -mm. it's all on purpose nothing like the Um, clock that's hanging on the wall yeah someone had everything's chosen to create a, story. a mood or an idea or whatever. And so we need to be aware of that and need to be aware that they're they're speaking to our children as well. Yeah. And that's not to say that you cut out all media and you just, you know, you don't do any of that, but to be um, aware of it and to be, um, what's the word? Vigilant. Vigilant and observant mm. of what's going on. Because like you said, um, a parent should be aware of what their, of what their kid is watching and who they're interacting with and so that you can say you know what i don't like that and and sometimes it might happen where you weren't aware that they were interacting with something but you are aware that they've got these new ideas your kids yeah yeah where you're like wait where's that coming from from? that's like a really strange worldview um 
one of my kids was really into this one YouTuber and was watching a ton of his videos. Mm -hmm. And then he started talking about how like being rich was evil. And I'm like, wait, where did that come from? You know, like I'd be like, well, you know, like there's plenty of really good. I've, I've met rich people that were really nice people. And I've met poor people who were not so great. It's just it, there's it's good and bad experience. people on both sides. Right. Yeah. But he was really certain on this. And then it's like, where is this idea coming from? And then I was able to eventually trace it back to this YouTuber. Right. I think that's part of the work you do in sheltering. Let's say your kid started to get hives. What are you going to do? Are you going to be like, well, I guess he's supposed to have hives. Or mm -hmm. I guess, you know, this kid's a hives kid. Right. No. You're going to you go, start wait, this questions. isn't like you. You don't usually get hives. What did you eat today? Did I change my soap? Yeah. Where did you go? What did you interact with? And it, it's the same way. I, I believe that all children are good humans. Mm -hmm. They have desires to be good. They have desires to be kind. They, they really are. Right. And that it is... So when your kid is having, if something's off or they're seeing new bad behaviors, it could just be they're really tired. Could be hormone, hormones. Hormones. I mean, but know, other times but. it's like, this isn't like you. There, You've got a new teacher in your life. Mm -hmm. And I want to find out where this, where this, where this is coming from. Now, I'm not going to just say I forbid you from having this thought because that's actually really bad you know? Yeah, we don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, though you might build a shelter, let's say, for your animals, you still want them to go out into the pasture, right? right. But you want somewhere to be sheltered from the storm. And mm -hmm. so we're going to now, and now I'm going to know, and I'm going to maybe talk about, I'm going to be able to watch that teacher. Right. Right. And I'm going to be able to talk to them about whatever that is, whether it's a TV show, whether are, it's someone on uh, YouTube, whether it's a, it could be TikTok. I mean, really, there's a group there. In. There are, what there's, is it called? There are messages coming from all over Reddit. I mean, it's mm -hmm. there's stuff coming in from all directions. And so when your child um, is doing these things, those are signs that maybe there's a little bit of, like like if you had a structure, a refuge, a shelter, mm -hmm. and there was water getting in. You know, we have a warehouse where we keep our stuff, and we came in one day, and there's just water on the floor. Yep. We can't, we weren't there when it was raining. But mm -hmm. we can immediately know that there's a leak somewhere. Right. <laughs> and so we had to figure out where that was. And you are going to be doing that. You've built, you're trying to create a shelter for your children where they can grow safely, where they aren't going to be tainted by weird or manipulated ideas. Right. But there will be leaks. And it's, it's going to happen. Yeah, it's your job as a parent to figure out where those leaks are and to fix them mm -hmm. so that they can continue you know, pro, um, growing and learning in a safe environment. Um, I just, I'm going to mention it again. We're not talking about those crazy parents who forbid their child from exploring any ideas mm -hmm. or like having any thoughts, but you're going to talk about all those ideas. You know, right. if, if, if one of my kids is saying something, if I really believe that my beliefs and my, my worldview is a good one, then I should be able to defend it. I should yeah. have some evidence. Yeah. I should be able to talk through it with my kids and not just demand that they believe it. Right. Now, I do live in a benevolent monarchy, like right. we said in the last episode. So I'm not necessarily going to say, like, if, if they're unconvinced, like, well, I guess you can do what you want then. You know, right. like, if I, my kid's unconvinced that he can't eat candy in bed at night and I've said, no, it's going <laughs> to rot your teeth out. It's not like... If, Logic if, doesn't if, always work with... No, if it, so if it doesn't work, that doesn't mean... <laughs> But I'm going they to win. talk to him about that. I'm not going to say, I forbid you from eating candy because it's bad. I'm going to say, well, there's a lot of sugar in candy. And when you're laying in bed, it's going to like, you know, rest there on your teeth. You, it'll like all the bacteria in your mouth will then have something to eat and then you'll get cavities, you know. So I don't want anybody. We're so sensitive to it these days that we immediately go back to like, oh, they're one of those That's controlling, what you're doing. sheltering doing. parents, right. you know. I just, I think we need to have a safe space again for parents who say, but I do want to shelter my kids. Yeah. I do want to like keep them away from certain people, from certain ideas, from certain experiences, because or I know Or at least want to have a space to ex to explain those ideas like you talked yeah. about, um, if they do come up or whatever. Yeah. Like I'm not against you talking about those ideas, but I might be against you going to this, you know, very dangerous place to learn about those ideas or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's like, let's do it here because yep. I love you more than anyone in the world. And my intentions are to help you become a happy, independent, successful adult. Right. 
I can't tell you about those other people. I yeah. know they don't feel the same way as I do. Well, and this is another message that comes through that for whatever reason, parents that want to that want to shelter their children are um, uncaring of their child, but the the this this administrator of the school is the one who cares, and they somehow care more than the the parent at home because their parent is portrayed as a crazy person who's has yeah. ulterior motives or something. But we know anyone listening to this is not that way. Yeah, and it's true. You love your child more than i'm sorry your teacher can love your kid a lot but you love them more mm. same with the principal at your school um and i don't really actually know those people and and some people <laughs> might say but they're better equipped because they're more educated i'll tell you what they may be more educated but love goes a lot further yeah because i can go read a book i can go seek out expert yeah. knowledge and i will you can gain that if my child comes home with hives and i take him to the doctor I mean, I know what will happen. He'll be like, yeah, well, sometimes we get hives. Here's some medicine. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, unexplained hives. It's a thing. <laughs> the, There's sometimes, a diagnosis. I mean, sometimes they can figure no, it but out. That but that can happen, right? Yeah. They don't care as much as you do. But as a mom, I'm not a doctor, but mm -hmm. I can, we have, we have the dang internet. Mm -hmm. I can search and I can talk to other moms and I can ask on groups and I can read and research and I will because these hives are incredibly uncomfortable for my child. I don't mm -hmm. want to see them struggle. That That's way more important than yeah. an administrator or somebody who's got an education. I am not coming down on administrators. Right. I'm just coming down the on this idea is, is that, that like you... parents shouldn't be the top decision maker in their children's lives. Right. And what they do is they always hold up a crazy family mm -hmm. who was either homeschooling their kids or whatever and abusing them. And then end up driving off a cliff. Which yeah. is exactly what happened in California. Yeah, like it, crazy things happen the all awful the time. Awful things happen. Anything taken too far is bad. Yeah, right? but like, are there not how many kids in public school are being abused? You know, and like also yeah. like how many, what we're not abusing our kids. Like why <laughs> why are you using that example and making us all afraid because we'll do this? Well, I'm not abusing my kids, but my neighbor might be. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? So we have to make these rules. Yeah, to protect because my neighbor's kids. There's unknown person out there that might be doing something. Yeah, bad. and it's like I. I don't accept that. There are alternatives to losing all of my power in my children's life to help them become help, ha happy adults than handing over everything yeah. or, or enabling abusers. Mm -hmm. There are other ways. And so let's not act like it's one or the other, mom. Do you want these kids to be safe? You know? Yeah. So. And so I think uh, as, as parents, you have to first in your own mind realize that. I can be a vigilant parent without being an over a crazy parent. A crazy parent. Um, you're going to have to accept that there are going to. You're going to have to stand your ground a little bit because there will there are people who, for whatever reason, don't see it that way. Well, maybe it's just yet. Yeah, and I, I repeating think repeating the narrative that they've always heard. Right, and and maybe it just takes them seeing someone, do it right, as it were, um, to to kind of shift that, but. What we're hoping that you as a parent will see, okay, maybe I need to, maybe I could step it up in a few areas in my with my children. What can I do to keep them safe? Um, and without worrying about how that's perceived by the outside world or how I might look if someone made a TV show about me or whatever, <laughs> um, and and just move forward with your, uh, you, you kind of alluded to that intuition of a parent. Both moms and dads can have that. I think moms uh, do have a little, can have a little stronger intuition, but trusting that and trusting that if you're feeling uncomfortable with the situation with your child or you're uncomfortable about uh, something they're watching or listening to, that you don't just accept the, uh, what they're doing and say, well, I guess that's just how it is. You know, it's, it's going to be kind of, I feel, I feel strange about it, but I'm probably I mean, overreacting. Right. Yeah, I'm just being silly. I'm being silly, whatever. No, trust that. We have had some really crazy moments in the 20 years of parenting where something something just didn't feel right. Right. And because we trusted that feeling and we investigated, mm -hmm. we were able to stop majorly unhealthy things from happening yep. and maybe rescue kids from things they were struggling with before they were ready to... You know, they were drowning in these things where they weren't ready to share it or yeah. or a million other things. But like things that like you just, there was no logical reason. 
just like I feel like I'm uncomfortable with this situation. Right. Yeah, I can see that you're acting differently or or anything. Yeah, one of our children, I will since we have five adopted children, I can tell this story and it can remain slightly anonymous, <laughs> was um, using a social media app to talk to people back in China, mm. which I thought was a healthy thing to do. I mean, I was a little uncomfortable because I don't know these people, yep. you know, and but they were talking with someone and it was people that seemed to be trustable because they had participated in, in their earlier years. Um, I just had the feeling like, I'm going to check that. Yeah. And I got on there and saw that one of the people this child was messaging was trying to send them money, which is like, first of all, I saw like kind of the area you guys live in. I, I, this My child doesn't need money from you. Yeah. That's and then was also like showering them with lots of praise. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel very uncomfortable. Right. This was, I mean, I'm an adult. I know adults don't do that. Right, because this was an adult talking to one of our kids. Yes, adult my age mm -hmm. talking to one of our children, and I was able to say, "Hey, let me let me tell you something," and talk to this child, mm -hmm. help them know, like, and 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 learn that they were uncomfortable too and didn't know what to do, but they didn't know what they would tattle on. Right, you know, because to them they didn't see any red flags there. No, and it would have gotten worse. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that I followed that. Yeah, and investigated. And then was able to teach that child, like, adults don't, <laughs> Interact don't this seek way. out relationships with children like right. this. Mm -hmm. That we don't normally, I'm like, can you imagine dad doing that? To someone. Yeah, you know, can you imagine dad else? wanting to message someone this age and just, to, you know, be buddies? And I've used that on more than one occasion because that's the world we live in where, yeah. you know, through other social media apps, things like that have happened again. The takeaway is as parents... There's nothing wrong with sheltering your child. That's what that's our it's your job. statement. It's your job. And trust in your ability to do so because you're the no one's a bigger fan of your child than you are. So trust yourself. Also, use your love as the catalyst to educate yourself so you can do a better job of building that structure, that shelter yeah. for them. And be observant because the the earlier you can kind of see the symptoms of something happening, the easier it is to kind of resolve that. Yeah, like issue. in a garden, it's a lot easier to pull very small weeds right. than really big ones yeah. with deep roots. Um, so you, you can still pull the big ones with deep roots. I don't want anybody out there listening like, well, my garden's <laughs> full of them, you know, theoretically or whatever, but it, they can still be pulled. But it... When you pull big weeds, it does sometimes damage the plants, uh -huh. right? So it is better to get the little ones that pull out with almost no effort. Yeah. And so be vigilant. And I think not resigning yourself to, well, this is just the way it has to be. Teenagers Teenagers are just have rude. to explore certain things and act a certain way toward me and my family. Um, and that's just, I guess that's kids just life. Kids. It's But that is another, I'm going to, I think that's a lie that's been, as that's been told i don't know why or how this has has kind of happened but everyone thinks their teenagers have to be jerks to them and have to be rebellious and have to be all these things it's just part of the growing up process now obviously we all have different personalities and some people may lean in that kind of rebellious well, like Elijah direction has a very great need to be independent right but he didn't he wasn't rude he had moments where I was like, hey, buddy, sure. yeah. watch it. Yeah, and they're all going to test that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure how this gets into sheltering kids. But I think I think by sheltering or by helping them, you can avoid some of these behaviors and some of the situations that come up. Or if they do come up, the situations are easier to deal with. Because this is um, what we've talked about before. That's I don't think a lot of parents realize that half of the work they're doing is because their children are bombarded with all of this just filth and toxicity and, and negativity, like negativity and, and just and yeah, then messaging. they have to spend half of their effort if not more just healing that mm -hmm. and undoing that but if you've built a proper structure that will shelter your children from those things in your home then you will be amazed at just how much easier it is to be a parent yeah
really. Like maybe this sounds overwhelming, but it's like, I pr- promise you, this is like getting This is things, the easier route. Yeah, like it, we talked about <laughs> pl- putting a cage on your tomatoes in our last episode. Yeah. It's a lot easier to harvest tomatoes from a caged tomato plant than to hope that you can get some off the ground. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't mean the one on the ground is a bad tomato plant. It just didn't have a gardener that understood what its needs were mm-hmm. to be a healthy plant. Yeah. And so sheltering your kids is that tomato plant. They will be happier and and they will still understand the ideas that their friends are talking about. But it will be in a, the stakes won't be so high when they're learning about them. Mm-hmm. They'll be able to really explore those ideas and there won't be pressure to hurry up and agree with the crowd. And make a judgment call as far as something being true or false but essentially like gives them some space to th- to think and to to kind of mold these things so over. like that's why it's crazy that that administrator said schools are places where kids learn to think for themselves i have never no seen I, a more like get in line with what everybody wants you to think right just in keep your head down and, do not and share anything forward. that's out of the ordinary with <laughs> yeah. anybody think what everybody wants you to think yeah so in in a sheltered environment your kids get to explore those ideas that's what's great yeah and they'll come back to us we'll talk about them some more and they'll get to think for yeah. themselves they have time to do that they have a space that's safe to do that where for it was like what do you think what do you think what do you think mm-hmm. they've gotten time to think about it so when it's time they can test out those ideas and then you know just last week one of our kids was having a talk with one of their friends who's decided to go a different way with their worldview and belief system. And absolutely, that was a long conversation for them. Right. And they came back with some questions and Mm -hmm. some things to think about. Yeah. And we didn't say, don't think about that. Or you're not allowed to talk to them anymore. Yeah. No, it's like, well, what do you think? Do you think that holds water? Let's work, walk through that. And here's some resources where maybe you can go and explore those ideas some more. Right. You got so, a safe, sheltered place to do that in. So, uh, yeah, I think we would contend that in a sheltered environment, you can actually explore more ideas you can really learn more openly and bring them out into the light of day, as it were, mm-hmm. and see if, if, they, if it goes anywhere. You know, mm-hmm. if that actually, uh, like you said, holds water. So I, at the end of the day, it's like sheltering your child will give them probably the chance to explore more ideas. Yeah. Um, but it's in a safe environment and they don't, like you said, there's not the pressure, but peer pressure to kind of get in line or agree um, with, you know, those who are, are kind of looking at them and, and, and it might be in a more argumentative sort of way. Or you have a whole group of kids in a, a schoolroom who are nodding their head and you're kind of thinking, I don't know about this, but everyone else is. So I guess I better go along. Yeah, because I, our sheltered home gives our kids the chance to not have to identify themselves so quickly yeah, and what they believe so quickly, you think it would be the opposite way. Mm-hmm. But the world is constantly saying, how do you identify? Yeah. What group do you belong what to? What team are you on? What I need to know right on? now. What are your pronouns? Right? Sure. And our kids get to just be kids. They're digging in the dirt. They're learning about the birds and the bees and the bunnies. With the rabbits. <laughs> they're, um, they're playing. They're creating. And they're hearing ideas and getting to sit with them as they slowly mature into whatever their identity and worldview is. So, you know, we're all about it. Build a beautiful shelter, a refuge from the storm, a safe place, somewhere where people can make healthy decisions, they can think things through, they aren't rushed, they aren't poisoned. Right. Um, and they're they're um, able to grow into a happy, healthy, well-adjusted adult. So thanks for joining us today. We enjoyed the conversation. We hope you'll come back. Also, please leave us a review here on uh, whatever podcast platform you're listening to it on. It, it helps us and share with your friends or family who you think might benefit from it. And then also join us on Patreon where we'll have more content, uh, some more interaction with you guys or with our homies. And um, also, we mentioned earlier, a monthly gift that Megan will be sending out to oh, one yeah. lucky patron. Anyone who's at any level of patron. It'd be a fun, I think to kick weird it off, find. we'll give the first gift to our first patron. Ooh. Because we just started it. We don't and have any We don't yet. have any homies. We have none. <laughs> so we don't have any, any homies. Uh, so yeah, the, I guess the first one's going to get the first gift. So that'll be that'll be fun. And we will also give you a shout out here on the the podcast. Yep, every homie, every every patron, 
we'll, we'll say thank you and hello. So thanks for joining us. We hope that uh, this information is helpful for you in creating a home, which is truly a place where you can say there's no place like home. And uh, yeah, again, thanks for joining us. And we will see you um, or talk to you on the next one. Oh. Okay. Bye. Bye.